to the levers. Yeah, the levers. Stretch sort of a thing, isn't it? Cups of tea in the summer house. Oh, the tea and cucumber sandwiches was part of the Sunday afternoon ritual. We had tea on the lawn under the trees. It was visiting time. Do people visit today or do they just hop in and say hi, bye? That's yes. Uh, cards were left. Ever heard of visiting cards? The river in those times was quite a center of social life and transport and punting and boating and it things was, like that. It, until you had lived on the river in Fendleton in the early days, it was like a private road. We all had our boats and our canoes, you see, and it was all slightly idyllic. There were meadows with buttercups. We played cricket and there were cows. It was lovely. We, we had tea out on the lawn and people would come gliding past in their boat. Oh, hello there, come in and have some tea. Well, we started off with about 10, because we were a fairly large family, and they ended up with about 30. And of course, the poor maid was battling backwards and forwards the kitchen with fresh tea and scones. Your mother simply sat there and poured tea. The so social all... position was, it was very important, I take it. You, you only mixed with your own kind? Uh, yes, we did. We, until we'd been introduced to people, you didn't know them. You, you knew the names of the tradesmen. They were always referred to by their surnames, you see, the Neville were Mr. And the classes were just the classes. There were trades and professions. And what, what, what was the role of a woman in all this? How much freedom did women have? Practically none. The father of a Victorian household, his word was law, and you, you had never known anything else. What he said was law. Uh, my mother uh, played, was very musical, she played and sang beautifully. She never worked that I could remember. She was simply ornamental, sweet, charming, and had no say in anything. This was the whole thing, you see. The facade was everything. Anything unpleasant was swept under the carpet, because we don't want to know about that, dear. This is what she said. Oh, we don't talk about that, dear. As though you, it was, couldn't be talked about, the fact that she had said, we don't talk about that. That she Something didn't. That. And various things happened. I remember when I first discovered Shakespeare, which, of course, completely bowled me over and still does, you see. And I, I would go, uh, to, oh, Grand, I've got a lovely thing. I must tell it to you. Oh, Lord, can I say this? Do you think I can? <laughs> go right ahead. Woo-hoo! Pox, how my guts do boil. Now, by my morning sickness, have I lost my virtue to this dull and ramish town. She said to me, I think, dear, you'll find there are very few occasions when you can say that. I advise you to forget it. Well, you see, I never have. So I have followed her there. Excuse me? Every now and then, and I'm going to be very bad before I'm 100, I do warn you, I've told them all, that you watch out. Anything could happen. I mean, it makes, it makes for, for fun, don't you think? Who's playing out here? Well, James Ralston and Timothy Campbell were on up the far end. And Angus Jennings and up James Barford are playing down this end. Thought I, re I recognised Angus. He's in the choir, isn't he? Yes. With you. Is he the head chorister? Is that yes. the expression? Yes, he's head chorister. Uh, and a pretty good tennis player. This is the final, is it? Yes. This music that you sing in the choirs appears to me to be pretty complicated. Yes. You have to work quite hard, at it, don't you? You spend a lot of time practising. Yes. How many days a week? What happens? Well, Saturday. It's the only free day, unless we go on special occasions. And we have a one hour practice on a Friday night after the service. And we have an early service on a Friday at 4.30. You must be quite looking forward to sort of, you know, giving all that up and getting into some rock and roll or something. No, it doesn't interest me. Uh, well, huh. what, what sort of music do you like most of all then? What's your favourite? Church music, probably. Yeah. Um, it's quite easy. It's um, a good good to sing, and there are many varieties to sing, so you can sing it all the time. This is actually an England Brother house. It's of wooden construction and large. And this garden, you described this as an English style garden, yes, would you? This was, the, the house garden. was actually built by a retired school teacher who came out from England, and he was one of these literary fellows who retired and came out here. 
and he built it very much on an English style. It must be quite difficult to maintain something like this. Well, um, when we first came here, it had been let go, and all this area was actually rubbishy trees. Um, we planted this part here ourselves. I planted 3,000 tiny little wee bucks like that. 3,000 of them, yeah. <laughs> 3,000 of them, at least. We've got spares as well. I keep cultivating them every year. And um, they've really only taken about six to seven years to get to this um, state where you can start clipping and, and boxing them. Now, having said yeah. all this, in point of fact, we're about to witness an auction here. Yeah. <laughs> You're yes. leaving. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's, it's been a big decision. We've been here 12 years and um, all my children have been brought up here. Um, but they ride horses. <laughs> and we've got three. And um, the summer's all right, but we find in the winter I'm out sitting in the paddock waiting for them to plat up and I'm up early in the mornings going a venting. So you're going to pass up all of this? We're going to pass up all of this. For your children's interest in yeah. horse riding. So we're ready, we're ready to conduct the auction for number 61, Rossell Street. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you on behalf of Robin and Stephen Ratcliffe. I don't mind saying I'm a little bit nervous. One twitch here and this house could be mine. The home, ladies and gentlemen, that comprises of six bedrooms with a main having an ensuite plus a walk-in dressing room. There's three living rooms, plus a formal dining and a study. And some of the features include some magnificent settings such as the wood panelling, the fireplaces. We've got character and we've got charm. I'm opening on behalf of the vendors at $600,000 and I'm going to take 25 at $600,000 at 625, at 625, 650. 650,000, at 650,000, at 650,000, 675, 675. At 700,000, taking 25s, 725. At $725,000, 750. At 750, 775, new blood, thank you. At 775,000. I'm at 795, ladies and gentlemen. Are you all finished at 795? After you've been in the choir for a year, you get your surplus, this white thing. And um, when you become more senior, you set tests, you get a blue ribbon, and then when you're in the third form, you get a red ribbon, and head chorister gets a special ribbon, and head soloist gets a green ribbon. Stand, move your chairs quite back to the outside, please. This will be the last candle that service I'll attend as a boy chorister. I might come back later as a man chorister, but this is it as a boy. It's an advent, so it's we're waiting for Christ to come. And it's dark with the candles, and we're walking up the aisle. We start at the front of the cathedral and work all the way up to the high altar. coming today to talk about Christchurch culture as such um, because for an outsider it's quite a difficult thing to understand in some areas. How would you describe Fendleton Christchurch in a matter of a few words? Money. That's one that's good, that's crisp enough for you. Do you think there's any sort of anxiety about, and I must to be frank we've picked up on a certain amount of defensiveness, is this part and parcel of life in this area that people feel they're defending something that's important to them? They've had so many 
jealous slurs and, and the sort of, oh, you know, the sort of academic unpleasantness about their way of life. And I think they're quite right to be defensive. I don't like hearing slurs, but they, slurs against them because they always come from people who have absolutely no idea what they're like. You know, you hear Christ God's jokes all over the place. I'm sick to death of them. To me, it's just a, a way of this little people being have not even um, You, because we're a, we're a Christ College old boy, a student of Christ College. Yeah. Um, did you, looking back... I still back, am a Christ College old boy, Gary. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, it never stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, taking that um, area of life, did you find that that education sort of equipped you well for yeah. life in New Zealand as you know it? Yeah, well, you put your finger on it. Life as I know it um, consists of the sort of, by and large, I sort of generalise, but by and large consists of the sort of people that I rub shoulders with both at school and university. I, I really, with a few exceptions, obviously, like any kid, I really enjoyed my school days. They instilled in me certain values, and they weren't noblesse oblige values. They weren't sort of looking after people who were less well off. They were simply understanding. I came out of that school, I think, believing firmly in justice. You do get the impression that Christchurch and Pendleton has managed to maintain a certain kind of safe and secure lifestyle while a lot of changes are going on in other parts of New Zealand. Do you think these changes in other parts of New Zealand will eventually permeate society here? I think Christchurch at, at large and this area as a whole will just be slower to adapt to it than other places, that's all. Can't be forced. Well, then, then we'll feel put upon. Right. You know? So you think a well-educated, reasonably ordered society can cope with those changes? Yeah, it, 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 it'll mean in a, in, a, in a phrase that they'll have to change from dark blue to denim in, in the Miraval Mall on a Saturday morning, that's all. It's a, more quickly than they do. But at the moment, this place does have a, an identity which is unique to New Zealand, but one can't help the feeling that it's transplanted England and that that, that, that will change because we are not England, we're New Zealand. Now, this is the last day for some of your people and the last class of the last day, is it right? It is, Gary, yes. Uh, six formers uh, handing their books back today. They're, they're finished for the year, their academic program. Over the next couple of weeks, they'll be going off on expeditions. Where's Work experience, from? we're in here. Mixed metaphor. Mixed metaphor. Titles of Catherine Mansfield's stories going around the circle, starting on my left. Starting on my left, starting on my left. Um, state school education. State you know. school education, um, when you're right, the garden party. The garden party. The fly party. Doll's house. <laughs> could, could you just explain um, to those people that haven't has been through this ritual what this means in terms of Christ College life? What, what was happening here? Well, it's self evident. I mean, have you been around any other classrooms? No, well, we've been around the buildings, but as we haven't really come across a group such as this. You, you know the school motto? No. Bene tradita, bene savanda. Good traditions well maintained. End of term hum. Oh, is this right? This is one of them, one of those lovely things. Yeah, at the end of term. Oh, if you look around the classrooms now, you'll see them all hunting. This is fantastic. I have no idea. Yeah. I suppose this is the wonderful thing about having the opportunity to share this with you, because a lot of people out there would not know. It's about an old, old English tradition. Is there, are there right. any others that are being no. enacted? That's it. Yes, yeah, sorry. That's it's a block, wasn't it? Right. The crash course. Yeah. No, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. Fantastic. Away they go. So this is it. We're on now, are we? Yeah. It's officially open. Yeah. You're well dressed for all this. Look at this. <laughs> Very attractive. Very good. Well done. The trick with Lucky Dips is to go right down to the bottom. That's where all the important. Uh, probably, the key, probably the keys to a BMW in here. I wouldn't be surprised. Here we go. This will be exciting. And what is it? Oh, fantastic. Look. Look at this. I've got a hair clip. Oh, that goes with it. you got to wear that for the rest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Bargains galore. Bargains galore. Fifty cents. 
cents for the lot. Okay, for 50 cents. Yeah. Okay, give them 50 cents. Pop it in a bag, everything can scrape out in a bag. Right. Thanks. Right. Well done. Did you realise Robin it was going to be as busy as this? Ah, uh, yes. I think, I think I just... I've not I... done this before, so I'm a bit nervous. Grab a bag. Grab a bag. Time to use. Ladies and gentlemen, remember at 12 o'clock is a bridal wedding dress parade in the small quadrangle. Uh, some very interesting wedding dresses, including one from 1912. I take it you're MC here for the day, eh? Yes, indeed I am. Yes, it's a big, a big job, and you look like just the man for it in that tartan, I must say. Well, there's a certain, uh, a certain uh, appropriateness, isn't there? <laughs> you know, Presbyterian school. So I believe. What are they aiming to make out of today? Have you any idea? Uh, I, the, the sum of $100,000 has been uh, has been mentioned, which is quite a lot of money. <laughs> Helping on my store, I was just saying they've come from all over New Zealand. The raffle tickets are selling with, with addresses from all over the South Island. I mean, that's really terrific. It means people have come all this way to come to the fair. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're really thrilled. It's been great fun. Come all ye jolly college boys, sing lustily, I pray, and recollect your battle cry and ring it out today. Up raising with a mighty sound of hip hip hooray, your college, college louder still. We're going to hear that tonight. And in addition, we're going to see all these books given out to pupils who have won prizes. Now, I make a list of some 170 names that are going to receive prizes in the carefully laid out 48 minutes of this presentation. It'll be a miracle if they can do it, but I, if anyone can, Christ can, I'm sure. Warden, fellows of the college, distinguished guests, members of common room, ladies and gentlemen. Time to go and a time to stay and you've reached So that's good. You got a prize there. What was that for and what yes. is it? Well, this is um, a book on the All Blacks. Oh, very you know, good. I'm quite keen on the All Blacks. I'm going to England in about five weeks, so they'll be hocking this off for a few bucks. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's for geography. All right. So you so. picked up a few books over the years, have you? Or? No, this is my first prize. So oh, look, congratulations. <laughs> Put it right here. Yeah, well done. Well yeah. done. That's my first one, yeah. yeah. So, good way to go out. Excuse me, you're obviously from the neighbourhood. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I think it's rather charming that early morning pendles and people get out. It's a community. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you live